Last time I got a nice 2D tr tracking camera working, which means that we can follow Scarfy around. But there's a problem. You see, if we go over here, oh, he's not walking on the terrain anymore. And if we walk this way, it's floating above the ground. And that is because if you look at the code, the ground is totally faked. There's a vertical position that I strategically set to be exactly where the ground is, uh, which fooled a few people, but it only fools you until Scarfy walks to an area where that's not the ground anymore. Uh, so that's what we're going to implement today. We're going to add proper collision detection and walking on the ground. Let's get started. In a nutshell, what we need to do is first detect is Scarfy on the ground, wherever the ground is, and then stop him falling through it. So two basic steps. Uh, to do the first step, we will create a bounding box around Scarfy. And then we know that the world is a set of tiles, so we can do a quick check which tiles is Scarfy touching, so which ones is he possibly colliding with. And then we go through and check is there ground on that tile and is Scarfy touching it. So that's the first step. And the second step is where it starts getting a bit more complicated. The physics is simulated uh, at specific time steps, so he may have fallen through the ground a little bit already, so we might need to reverse him back so he's back up on the ground, which is not too bad in this situation, but in a real game you will have multiple objects, so if you move or, or bounce or, or move an object back a little bit, it might hit another object, which means another collision which needs to be processed, so you end up with a sort of an, have to do multiple iterations before you get it right. And I was going to start programming all this, and then I thought, you know what, rather than doing that, how about I use the Box2D physics engine? Now, I know, I know, uh, there are people who will say, Box2D, don't use it, don't use a physics engine for a platformer, you don't want realistic physics, it's overkill, blah, blah, blah. But, you know what, it's already been done by others using Box2D. It works well, I think this is a good opportunity to try to use something uh, something new, and Box2D has been battle tested, so a little, all the little troubles that you can find, you can run into when you're creating a physics engine, uh, they've been dealt with. The physics engine's view of the world is quite different, because it doesn't care about pretty colors, it just needs to know the shape of the objects, things like their mass density, and where they're moving, and forces acting on them. So, what we need to do is to create some physics objects for the, the visible objects in the game. And Box2D has quite a good getting started tutorial. It just shows you how to create static ground objects, like a box, and some dynamic bodies. So let's start by generating the bodies for the tile map. And what I'm doing here is I'm going through the tiles, and for each tile, I check, is there a collision shape? And if there is, I generate a physics body for it. Uh, and its properties, its shape. And then it's added to the world. And at this point, I need to issue a performance and bug warning. <laughs> Creating one physics object per part tile is kind of wasteful, so it uses up more memory and also more processing time because every individual object needs to be processed separately. And while that's fine for this demo, especially on a fast computer, at some point you will find it all adds up and your game starts to slow down. And there's one other problem, and that is uh, Scarfy is actually stuck here. So I'm pushing left. But he's not moving because there are floating point inaccuracies. Floating point numbers are not 100% precise. And there's a tile boundary here, and it's managed to catch at the tile boundary. Now, if I move in the other direction, then he'll dislodge, and he can move around again until he will suddenly get stuck, like he gets stuck at this corner here when he should be able to run up the hill. Now, I'm going to work around that by changing from a rectangle to a rectangle and with a circle for his legs. So now when I move him, he can move up no problem. Go up and down the slope no problem. And he does not get stuck 
at any of the boundaries. There's another trick going on here. If you look very closely at Scarfy's legs, you might see that there are actually two circles there. The second circle, if you look at the code, this is the code that creates Scarfy's or a character's physics body. If you look at the bottom, you'll see there's what's called a sensor. Where is it? I'll... Yeah, here, here's the foot sensor. So this is a little circle that sticks out a little bit below the below Scarfy and checks, are we touching the ground? It doesn't actually interact with the physics world other than detecting that there's the ground. I'm taking my cue from Ben Hopkins. If you look at his, his web page talking about using Box2D and a platformer, uh, he also talks about having a foot sensor to detect whether he's standing on the ground in a stable way so that you don't get these repeated on, off the ground, on the ground when he's just walking across. There's one other trick that I, you can find in this code for which I have to thank Ben Hopkins again, and that is here. And if you look at this code, you'll see that I'm adjusting Scarfy's friction. So his friction goes up when he's stationary so that he can stand on the diagonal slopes. Otherwise, he'd slowly slide back down, which uh, we don't want. And drops the friction down when he's moving. So thank you to Ben for that. I, I think Box2D's API is quite easy to use. It's a bit verbose, uh, especially if you look at this, this is the function, the entire function to create the physics objects for Scarfy. It's a bit on the long side, although that's not surprising given that physics is kind of complicated. Anyway, once you've finished that, you have a physics world in which Scarfy can walk around in and jump. And if you hide away the physics representation of the world, it's, uh, it's almost like magic. And with all that done, Scarfy can now run and jump and walk around the environment. So that's it for today. I will see you next time when I take on the next part of the challenge.